It is in fact common to combine these kind of photography with what we can see in the sky and that's one of the advantages in comparison to other types of nature photography. When you're shooting an elephant or a lion, you can't have a lion in the room to show an actual example. But with the night sky, you can present your work anywhere dark. Here we are in a place a bit far from the light pollution of Los Angeles, dark enough to see the planets and the stars. Therefore, we can talk about the night sky in my photography and then take a look at the sky. So that's why we had telescopes here and people enjoy the connection between the images, the actual view in the sky right after the talk. Every year around summer, I do a photo workshop in California with my colleague. Uh, we call it the uh, Night Escapes Academy. So people who are interested about night sky photography in, across the US, they travel to California to learn about astrophotography and to enjoy the darkest skies of California. We go to one of the national parks or high altitudes. And for this year in 2018, uh, we were in the Sierras, despite the f fog and the haze, caused by the smoke, the fire in the forest. Uh, we managed to go to a certain altitude above the haze layer and see crystal clear sky. Especially this year we set the workshop during uh, August for the Perseids meteor shower. So last night was the peak of the Perseids and we were imaging many of the bright meteors that are called fireballs. This is typically happening several times per year and one of them is in August. I usually do not process my images right away because editing nighttime images takes a long time because of the noise and the problems that you see from the lens when you're using it at wide open aperture. So it takes time, but since I'm more active nowadays on social media for the National Geographic uh, pages, I, I have to edit right away. So that was a picture I presented in the talk that was made last night. And one of them was from this morning. Through my career, I've been always a photographer and science journalist. As a science journalist, I like to share, I like to communicate and do outreach in science. And it's very um, effective to use an image, illustration, to show what's up in the sky. Many, many people, urban people, have lost the connection with the night sky. So when you show a picture of the Milky Way, they can reconnect with the natural night sky that is lost due to light pollution. And that brings another part of myself and my career as a science journalist to put a story next to the image. So I always combine my images with a story and with a bit of science, a taste of science, not too much, but just a taste to uh, make a better understanding of what's up in the sky and how far we got disconnected from this part of nature. A beautiful image today is not enough for photography. In photography, we are usually dealing with art, uh, technique, moment and a story. Nowadays, moment and a story are more and more important uh, parameters of photography. And in my type of imaging, I usually put a story which describes the science behind and the adventure of nighttime activity uh, with a moment which is related to celestial phenomena such as moon and planet together or a comet which will not repeat um, the appearance which will not repeat in several decades or a solar eclipse. Anything rare gives you that moment effect which uh, enhances the image and its effect to public. Another of my rather recent or very one of the very latest images to the galleries is this. And that's again similar to the Grand Teton picture, this thing is not possible to repeat within my lifetime because it's the most intense aurora activity in the past 15 years. I was just uh, more than lucky to be there in Iceland. I was doing a, my annual workshop in Iceland in March and right after it finished and all, everybody went home, <laughs> <laughs> There was this massive solar storm, but it's not possible to predict that, otherwise I was more than happy to offer it to my <laughs> Every National Geographic photographer 
aim to preserve a part of nature. It's either about a lake, it's climate change, it might be about the pristine oceans, mountains and glaciers, also about the night sky. Night sky as an essential part of our environment deserves to be preserved, but it needs to be first better introduced to public so we can understand it as part of our nature, not an isolated a laboratory for astronomers only, but a part of our environment which every person can communicate with. When I was a teenager, I got into astronomy by looking at the moon. Every day when you look at the moon in the sky, it's so connected to our nature, you don't think about it. This is another world. You're looking at another body, celestial body outside of the Earth, wandering in a space around our planet. So now think about it, about every star and planet in the sky, and then you will inspire and get impressed what is available in the night sky to everybody. And it's free, freely available to all public on the planet where access to dark sky is possible. When we look at the universe above us in these photos and in, in person, uh, in nature, you feel how small is our planet, how, how small is our self and our, our matters and issues. Countries become to war over a small land, while this vast universe is above us peacefully. Uh, so I think this, there is a message in the night sky that brings us all together with peace. The night sky is a bridge between civilizations. It's a roof above all of us. And the night sky, with this power of showing our origin and future, besides being an important part of science, an element of our nature, needs to be preserved. In the World at Night program, which I have started in 2007 and now running with a group of 40 photographers in 25 countries, we produce and present images that reconnect people with the lost part of the nature, night sky. We are trying to enable activists and environmentalists who are working against the light pollution and those who are preserving the darkest skies by using these images communicate with public with media and with their local official to inform them about the importance of night sky and why we should preserve this like other essential part of our nature uh, the word at night program is a non-profit initiative with this group of photographers worldwide trying to um, save the natural nights. Uh, you can join us by submitting images to our guest gallery, you can join us by just sharing the message worldwide um, or following us on the social media, either me directly under my name or the program Tuan under the name of Tuanite. Uh, the website is also tuanite.org.